about Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, and 9, 4 to 9. I'll have my water memo, please. Thank you. He say, Hear, O Israel. He's talking to who? Who is Israel now? Hear, O my people. You are, we are his people. Amen? The Lord is our God. Amen? The Lord is one, the only God. Amen? Okay, where is the moms here? Where is the boy is here to shout amen? I need to hear amens today. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength and your entire being. Amen. Hallelujah. These words which I am commanding you today shall be, what? Written, written on your heart and in your mind. Don't keep it only in your mind. You shall teach them diligently to your children. We all are children, isn't it? Diligently to our children. Impressing God, God's precepts, on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And shall I speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lay down and when you get up. Every moment is talking, isn't it? Every second. And you shall bind them and sign on your hand. Oh my goodness. Forearm. And they shall be used as a band's frontal frontlets from you for her. You see, in Israel, it's a lot. To, it's a type of religion. What are they? Philanthropists. That they have something here. It's the word of God, but the word of God have to be here in your heart, in your heart, in your heart. Verse eight. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand for her for arm. Sorry. And they shall be used as a bands, frontals, frontlets on your forehead. You shall write them on the door spot of your house and you on your gates. What does it mean that? What does it mean? In verse 6 say, the words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind and not just not just in our mind but have to go to our heart so we feel also the word of god amen we need to do it in our heart it's so so important verse 7 you shall teach them diligently to your children he's telling us to do and you, even there are parents already. You are allowed to tell them off. You are allowed to, te to tell them the truth. You are until they die. And my mom used to say, my mom has 12 children. I am the youngest of 12. And she used to say, I will correct my children until or they die or I die. But they will not die before I die. But, and she always, my sister was 40 years old. And we were in the sitting room. We weren't Christians in those days. We were more Catholic in that way, not practicing. And we were talking and laughing. And one of my sisters said, a, a small, it's no small for God, no? Swearing word. My mom stand up and she was in her 40s and slapped her face. And said, you have to respect. And we should be doing like that. No, we should. Sometimes they need it. So don't be in front of me and say some words because I don't know where my hands will go. Anyway, it needs to be done. The Bible is so good instructing the children, instructing us, the law, the wisdom of God. Amen? The principles of God. It teaches us so much wisdom. If you read the books of Proverbs, if you book, read the books of Ecclesiastes, they are absolutely excellent. There are all kinds of life principles throughout the Bible to learn and to teach our children. 
We need to know the scripture so we can talk to them and teach them, isn't it? We need to teach them the word of our heavenly father. But the most important thing here is what it says in verse 5. What is it say in verse 5? I need you read it with me. You shall love the Lord, your God. Amen. Amen. And that is the basic. That is the root. That is the beginning what we need to teach our children. Grandchildren also. Don't forget about them. All our families. So they will love to read the word of God. You can tell the little ones, look, the Bible say that. Oh, daddy, God say that, and that, don't do that, don't do this. No. But you will never teach them to love the author of the Bible, our creator, our Lord, to fear him. Amen. The Bible is the book of life. Amen? Amen. We learn there what is the will of God for us. Amen? And how we can live, and how we can practice courtship, and how our marriage should be like. Amen? Amen. And how we should discipline our children. Are you with me? Amen. How we can pray for healing, how we can ask for anything. It is in the Bible. Amen? Amen? And all that is very, very good. It's very, very important. But if you all get all the parts from the Bible, all these verses from the Bible, without the big thing, you are missing the big picture. And then you can become a bunch of sad Pharisees. You hear that? Shall I repeat again? I don't think I need to repeat that. Because you don't want to be a bunch of sad Pharisees, isn't it? You need to get the Bible. The goal here is to love the Lord. You go with all what? Our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies, our all strength, everything. With everything. We love to see the sunset, isn't it? Praise the Lord. When we have beautiful sunset, sometimes I send a message to one of my little friends, and she go up in the tree and take photos. I'm not going to say who is that little one. But it's beautiful, the sunsets here. Sometimes people go to Santorini to get a special sunset and never get sometimes. We came here and it's amazing sunsets, isn't it? It's so, so, so beautiful. We love to see the sunset. Yes. So when you walk outside or you look through the window of your house and you see, see the most beautiful sunset you ever see in your life, it just takes your breath away. Don't you think? Don't you think? So what do you, what do, you do in order to appreciate the sunset? What do you do? What do you do in order to get it to take your breath away? Well, you do absolutely nothing because it's already done. He did all the work, amen? All you have to do is to see it, is to admire it. It is so spectacular that it takes my breath away. It's so amazing. It wasn't by the Big Bang, do you think? Or evolution, you think? That beautiful sunset can come from that? Of course no. Well, that is how you learn to love your Lord more. You see, you can get a list of verses from the Bible teaching that you have a lovely God. That want to see you all well, healthy, prosper, prosperous, happy life all the time, do you think? Somehow you memorize all these special verses and teach them to your children. And it's brilliant. It's fantastic. 
and they should make you love the Lord more, don't you think? The problem is that you can start focusing more in those verses for your life, for your children's life, and your finances, and your health, and everything that you need, and forget to love the Lord. Do you agree with me? You love God more by knowing God more. He's altogether lovely. He is. Now your heart has been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. That heart will appreciate the loveliness of God. And all you need to do is showing more of God's loveliness in order to get all this love and joy in your own house. Amen? You teach, you need to teach them, of course, about his righteousness and his justice and his wrath and his healing and his provision. They are important. We need all to have these verses. Learn all that to your children, all sorts of principles. But we cannot miss the big picture. And what is the big picture? Verse 5. Again, love your Lord. We need to learn to love the Lord. But also we need to teach your children and we need to learn, learn the beauty of God, how beautiful he is, the joy of God. I know a son about the joy. Do you know that? Is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on. We need to have the joy of the Lord. They, you need to see who God is in the scriptures. They need to see his beauties, his excellences, everything about him. They need to see it. And God has regenerated a heart that will grow to love him more and more. It is lovely to see your house, my house, very biblical, know about God. But also we need a bit of that joy of the Lord. Don't we? Yes. We need that joy of the Lord. Love that breaks out with a song and dance in life. Don't you think that? Yes. Hope. Beautiful. Remember, this is a beautiful story of romance. Amen? Jesus and the bride. Amen? The bride waiting for her groom. Wow, come on. Getting ready. How romantic is that? How beautiful is that? As we love our Savior, we obey him. And our children will obey him. Amen? Obedience is better than the sacrifice. It's, it is written there, isn't it? Yes. And as we love him, we serve him with all our hearts and, with, and our children will follow it. We can see, sorry, I take, I tell you, the very family. Mom and dad serve the Lord hard. And the two children are serving the Lord hard here also. It's beautiful. The children will follow that. When we fast, we feast with him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And as we cleanse, as we, as he cleansed us already, he did it already with his precious blood. Let's don't get dirty anymore. Let us start loving Jesus again. Let's go come back to him and wait for him and, his, and be the bride that he's waiting, he's coming for. There is a difference to tell someone that what Jesus means or what the cross means, isn't it? But you children, you grandchildren need to know 
what the cross means to you, individual. Amen? What Jesus means to you, mom, dad, granny, granddad, uncle, auntie, everyone. What did it mean to, to you when you made the decision to follow Jesus? What it does mean to you? When you are able to express to them what does Jesus and the cross means to you, that possibly will become something incredible, a memorial in them. It will mean something big to them. Oh, my granny, my granddad, my auntie, my, how they say in, in Boya, my mom, my uh, all. It's beautiful. You can have a lot of knowledge in your head about the Bible. But you cannot fake a relationship with Jesus Christ because they will see your behavior at home and outside. You cannot fake that. Strive, desire to know him, parents, brothers and sisters, that you may grow in him and glow in, in front of your children of your grandchildren and the rest of your family. In the meantime, you'll be able to hand down stories to them, important stories, things that have to do with your life in Jesus Christ, what Jesus did and is doing in your life, things that happen in certain times in you, your conversion, maybe what God teaches you in trials and circumstances that you can share with them your testimony. They will see that all these kinds of stories in the Bible that you read, everything you as individual are living that now. Amen? Today is so important. But how we can be a great example of God to them? How? How we can, how our marriage can change? How our children can change? The society change? How will be, how will be so good not to hear anymore about young adults, teenagers killing themselves? We were here, isn't it? We were talking yesterday with Jean and her daughter, Carrie, about all that. They were in the funeral last Monday, a young boy, 18 years old, that he jumped to the bridge here, in the viaduct. How getting in drugs, all these people? How? First, it starts with us, as a Christians, going back to our Heavenly Father. We need to go back, amen? He's calling us back to him, to love him. So his love will restore us, our families, and our community, communities, and our land. Don't you think? Yeah. We need to go back to what we left, the, the first love. Or the legacy that our parents left if they were Christians, of course. Or our relative left. We need to go back to the teaching of Jesus and leave a legacy to our children, our grandchildren. We need to go back to the king. Come on. We need to go back to the king. Come on, give a big cup to the king. Come on, come on. How much you love the king? Come on, come on. How much you love him? In a world dark, darkened, by sin and a culture that has lost its way. And let us stray by the devil's devices. We are adrift morally. Don't you think? Don't you think? If you see the news, teenagers killing themselves, depression, anxiety, drugs, alcohol, all that killing people, Others be killed by knives. Here is just a fraction of what is going on in our country and in your own countries because it's many people not from England, isn't it? 
Some people come to England, to live in England, to get a better life. Wow. Well, you need to pray for this country too. Because there is a saying here in England. They say, the grass is always greener on the other side, but we forget the grass also needs cutting or mowing. We need to pray for this country too. If you are living here, you have a responsibility to pray for this country. Amen? Because what about they are legal or they already legalized, legalized the abortion many years ago? What about teaching our children, these little ones, about sex at the early age and which kind of sex they are teaching them? People lost their jobs, their jobs because they talk about Jesus. Because they are wearing the cross. Homosexual behavior is not only accepted, but praise. And an entire month, this man, if you don't know, is dedicating to be, being proud of it. What is that going on, guys? Some elementary schools are hosting a drag queen story hour. And mega churches receive reports of sexual misconduct by it is pastors, making the children confused about their identity. Yeah. Couples are celebrating the dissolution of the marriage with divorce parties. What is going on in this world? Where are we, guys? All of these and so much more affirms our needs to return to God. Amen? Come on. To his word, this word you need to read. Now you go and come back, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, and forget about the word. And to follow the teaching of his son, Jesus Christ. It reminds us that we need to pray the prayer of Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people... My people. Who is his people? Who is his people? Us. Hallelujah. Who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal, heal their land. Jesus. So let us, as God's people, apply this ancient divine counseling to our lives. Shall we? Yeah. Number one, humble ourselves. Proverbs 29, verse 23, what it says, a man's pride and sense of self-importance, you see, will bring him down. It is written in the word. But he who has a humble spirit will obtain what? Amen. Come on. We need to be reminded that God has blessed us already. Amen? Our personal and collective affluence, success, and greatness is the result of a kind creator. Two, pray. He's calling us to pray. Humility leads to earnest prayer. Pride takes us away from prayer. Do you know that? When you don't open that beautiful mouth that you have to say, Jesus, I need you. When you don't open that mouth, you are proud. Simple like that. You are proud. You need to open the mouth and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you. Stop being proud. Pride takes us away from prayer. It does. Paul exhorts us that we should pray for others and for those in authority. First Timothy 2, 1 and 2 say, a call to prayer. He's calling all the time to pray. First of all, then I urge that petitions. As a specific requests 
Do you understand that? I love this version, Amplified. Prayers, intercessions, prayers for others. We need to pray for each other. Amen? It's important. And thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all people. Doesn't say, oh, I don't like this one, so I'm not going to pray for this one. No, no, no. All people. For kings and all who are in position of higher authority. So that we may live a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Do you think that can be possible? Prayer is more effective than anything else. Anything else. You need to get into prayer, guys. You need to. Adults, grandparents, great-grandparents, fathers, children, little ones, teenagers, young adults, everyone get into prayer. Third, seek the face of God. If our nation is to be healed, if our family is to be healed, we must come to the great physician for the spiritual balm so badly needed. Yes? The American president, Kelvin Coolidge, once said, what did he say? Is there in the screen? We do not need more national development. What did he say? We need more spiritual. We need that. Four, turn from our wicked ways. It is not enough to know what is right. Yes? You with me? We must do it. Yes, do it. We must turn from both the practice of sin and the approval and tolerance of it. You have to stand up strong in the world and don't approve anything is going against God. Not even with your children. Don't feel afraid of them. They will go angry and they will come back. Don't worry. But we need to be. While it is easy to apply these principles to others, perhaps we all should look within our own hearts to see whether we are really being the light of the world, isn't it? Like in Matthew 5 says, the salt of the air. Are we? Rather than cursing the darkness and, criti and criticize others for our towns, for our nation's problems. Let us live for the Lord. Love him with all our minds, all our hearts, all our bodies, all our sons, all our strength with everything. And so love others. Let our light shine and lead the way with our children, our families, and our community. We have become a broken nation. Don't you think? Broken homes. Broken young men and women. Broken leaders. Broken by sin. A return to God begins with us, with our family, and in our homes. Amen? Amen. And in your heart. Amen? Amen. It's a very important role of parents in forming the character of the children. You need to teach your children. You need to correct your children. You need to. Like ancient Israel, Christian parents need to reinforce God's word at every opportunity and in every circumstance in life. Yes? yes. Yeah. Verse 7. What does verse 7 say? When you are sitting around the house, in your daily walk, when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night all the time, note these expressions used by Moses on how the world regulates our lives and what they mean. Verse 8 is 
underline there, bind them, bind them as a sign on your hand. God's word directs every action. Yes? Frontless between you eyes, the next part. From less between your eyes, God's words control your thoughts. Amen? Amen? Verse 9. Write them on the doorspot of your house. Means God's words regulate you, our family life. Amen? Amen. Then the next one. Write them on the gates of the city, on your gates. God's words guide our social interaction and our relationship with others. Getting back to God is our only hope. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It begins by rededicating our lives to him, one heart at a time, one home at a time. At the end of the, the long 40 years trek in the wilderness, Moses repeated the words of the covenant that God made with Israel, which began in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel. Come on. Hear, my people. He's telling you, he's telling us, hear, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. He is the only one. Your Lord is not you money. Your Lord is not you car. Your Lord is not you family. Your Lord is not your job. Your Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He's the only one. You shall love the Lord. Okay, again, you go with all you want. And it's written there. Why we don't do it? Uh? But this appears to be an impossible command for failing man to attain, isn't it? Why we don't do that? We are born dead in sin and eternity, an enmity with God. As members of a failing race, we have all sinned. And all have fallen far short of the goodness and perfection of God. Yes? God alone is perfect. So he alone is able to fulfill the commands, commands to love with every fiber of his being. Oh, my goodness. For God alone is love. It is humanly impossible to love the Lord in the way he commands, yes? And how to love others without the same godly love. No one can love God every moment of the day and in every circumstances of the life. No one. I cannot say I, when I, something happened to me very bad, oh, I love you, Lord. Yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult. What we say, God, why you let that happen? No, we have to love him. We have to love him. We have to love him. Any circumstances, as members of humanity, we are bound by our failing nation to fall, fall short on, of his perfection. Irrespective of the sin we commit, on a daily basis, we break this particular command continuously. Yes? Don't, don't tell me you're holy. Oh, no, I don't. Do you? For it is not a humanly possible to love God with all our heart. Indeed, it is impossible to love as Christ loved us, which was the new commandment he gave to each member of the Christian church. Once we understand our inability to obey God's commands and admit our spiritual bank bankruptcy, we are in a position to admit that we are sinners 
in need of a savior. Indeed, this was the original point of God's holy law. It was given as a schoolmaster to teach us about Christ. It was a signpost to bring us to the foot of the cross. Throughout his eternal, throughout his earthly life, Jesus was seeking to expose this deadly, sinful flaw in mankind's character. Christ was seeking to show the imminent immensity of our sin against the goodness of God so that he could provide the message of salvation by grace through faith. Jesus, it is by grace, through faith, in the death, in the burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that we who are members of his body have been cleansed from our sin, made children of God, clothed in the righteousness of Christ himself. Amen. Come on, people. Amen. The perfect man, the Lord Christ Jesus, was good enough to pay the enormous price of sin. Only he was capable to loving God in a perfect love, isn't it? Only in Christ can we be forgiven of sins and only in Christ can we be imputed, imputed with his nature and love as he loved us. Only in the power of Christ can we love the Lord our God with all our heart. Only in him can we love God with all our souls, amen? amen? And with all our mind, amen? And with all our might and with all our strength, amen? amen? For it is only as the very love of Christ flows in the heart that has been washed and cleansed by his sacrificial blood that we can love with a Christ-like love. It is only as we abide in him and continue to be filled with his spirit of love and the very love of God is poured out into our hearts from his Father, the hard love. Only as we are filled with his supernatural love from above, we are able to reciprocate that love. Amen? Amen? Only as we walk in the spirit and in truth can we love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, with all our strength, with all us. And thus become a channel of his love to those that are hurting today's days. Only through his love. To love the Lord our God with a Christ-like love is only possible as his love is continuous, continuously poured into our heart. Amen? The more we soak with him, the more we abide in him, the deeper our love for him will become. Indeed, as we witness the faithfulness of God in the difficulties, the struggles of life, and experience his tender mercies in the painful circumstances through which we must inevitably pass, our love, love for God can only depend and strengthen as we grow in grace, grace and in the knowledge of him. May our hearts, may our heart cry become that we, we, all of us guys, are you with me? Yeah. Love the Lord our God 
with every fiber of our being as we die to our own self-interest and live for him alone.